Okay, this video is for determining an activity series, um, which is a skill you will have to be able to do for your test. And this is a very similar setup to questions you have in your pretest packet um, and on the test itself. So make sure you know how to do these types of problems. And I'm going to walk you through it step by step. Um, I think you'll enjoy this type of problem. It's pretty straightforward um, and it's kind of fun because you're figuring out the activity series. Um, and notice the elements we're using here are not all real. We have like A, B, and C. Those aren't real elements, but we're going to use the data here to figure out how they compare in reactivity. So the way these problems are set up is we have um, the reaction that was set up, and then we have some observations to see if a reaction happened or not. And we have to use that um, to get some meaning out of it. And the easiest way to do that, I'm going to walk you through this is to make a table and in that table you're going to have more active on one side and less active on the other side and I would just put it right next to the reaction so you can keep it very organized so in this first reaction whoever did this reacted element C with H2SO4 or sulfuric acid. Um, so what's trying to happen, what C is trying to do is replace the hydrogen, right? These are single replacement reactions. Um, however, our observations are that no reaction happened. So you just have to ask yourself, if no reaction happened, who was stronger? C was trying to kick out H, but it was not able to do so, which means that H was the stronger element. So we would say that H is more active and therefore C was less active. Okay, so we're going to go through each reaction and keep track of that. So for the second one, we have A reacting with nitric acid. So again, this is a different element. Element A is now trying to kick out H. And did the reaction happen? Yes, bubbles formed, which is a sign of a chemical reaction. So since this reaction happened, it means that A was strong enough to go in and kick out hydrogen. So from that, we can say that A is more active than H. Okay, so the next reaction, B reacting with ASO4. Again, these are fake elements, but we don't really need to know what they are um, in order to interpret the data. We know what it was set up as, and we know, according to the observations, a dark substance forms, which tells me that there was a reaction. So B was able to kick out A in order to produce a chemical reaction. So in that case, B was more active than A. And the next one, B reacting with sulfuric acid. B was trying to kick out H. Was it able to do so? Yes, because we got a reaction. So B was strong enough to kick out H. And the last reaction given, B reacting with SrCl2. Again, B is trying to kick out Sr, which is a real element, uh, but again, not important. There was no reaction. So who was stronger, B or Sr? Well, SR was stronger because B was not able to kick it out. So in this case, SR is more active, B is less active. All right, that's most of the work right there is making that table. Just going through reaction by reaction um, and figuring out this information, which one's more act active and which one's less active. Once you have that, filling this out is pretty easy. And I'll give you some hints um, that I think work really well. I usually start by trying to figure out the most active and then work my way down. And the easiest way to do that is to look in your more active column or look at both columns, but try to find an element that was only in the more active column and never in the less active column. Because if it only shows up in the more active column, it means that it was never beaten, right? And that's the definition of most active. Um, if it shows up over here, that means someone was able to beat it. So you're looking for one that's only in this column never in this column, um, do you see it? Hopefully you see it. SR, never appears in this column. So from that information, 
we can say that SR is the most active element. Now from there, what I usually do is just go from SR, it went head to head with B, right? So B lost to SR, but from there, now we're gonna kind of look at B and see if anyone else was able to beat element B. B only lost to SR, which was the strongest, but did B ever lose to anyone else? So here B went against H, it won. B went against A, it won. No one was able to beat B. So that tells me that B is next, the next strongest. All right, and then still moving forward from B, B went head to head with A and H. So maybe A or H will be next. So you just need to see in respect, with respect to those two, who's better. And if you look at the second reaction, we have that information. A is stronger than H. So B beat both of those, but A is stronger than H. So A is next. A beat H. Did anyone else beat H? No, H beat C. So that means H is next. Um, C would be the least active. All right, so that's my tip on how to do that. That's the way I approach them. Start with your most active um, and then work from there, given the data. Okay, so that is a specific type of problem, determining an activity series. So you'd be given this information. It doesn't tell you to make this table, but you wanna make this table um, and then you'll be able to easily fill out these boxes by using that information, right?